Hi everyone, this is Elixir's most published author, Bruce Tate. In this video, we're going to talk about OTP, the soul of Elixir. This video is an introduction to core concepts. If you want to dive deeper, I invite you to come to Groxio. There you will find video courses and professional training opportunities to get that job or secure the promotion that you've been looking for. Let's go. Hey everybody, it's Bruce and the dog on the floor. And today we're going to talk about OTP. Now OTP is a library for processes and it has a common API for message passing and managing life cycles. And today we're going to focus on this piece that does the message passing. Let's get started. Let's go ahead and create a new project. Let's call it Randy. Mix new Randy. And I'm going to create this with the supervisor. And this is just a very basic OTP example. All we're going to do is build an OTP gen server that creates random numbers in the range that we specify. So, We've created a project, let's take a look. Before we go too far, let's look at the elements of our mix new. Now these are the individual files that were created and the ones to pay attention to are this one because it has the implementation of the, the Randy module. And this one, it has the test helpers which essentially are going to set up our test. And then it also has this file. And this is a script that actually runs the test. But I also want to point out that we get an additional file by virtue of the dash dash sup argument that we pass. This is our supervisor, but we're going to think of it as something that manages life cycles. And we'll get to that in another video. But let's go ahead and change into that directory. And then let's go ahead and edit the file. Okay, so here we are, and we have our randy.ex, and I'm going to delete this implementation. We're not going to need it. And I wanna go ahead and, and look at a potential gen server example. So while we are working on this, let's open up an IEX session. So we built our IEX session, and I wanna get H, and I wanna get help, for a generic server that is nicknamed GenServer. Okay, so this is effectively what a Gen server looks like. Let's scroll all the way up here. It's a long example. Okay, this is a typical Gen server. We have the def module, and then we have the use Gen server, and this bit of code is a macro that is going to trigger the code that actually includes the behavior that defines our callbacks. And the two callbacks that we are going to use are handle call. So in case our process uses the gen server library to make a call across the process boundary, this is going to be the message, the process ID that it came from, and the state of the gen server. And then we also need this init. But let's go ahead and just grab these three things right here. I think that this is going to be enough. So we'll go ahead and grab that. And then we'll shift back to the code editor. And I'll drop this in. And here's the use gen server. And we have the callbacks here. I'm going to go ahead and delete this. We know that they're callbacks by virtue of this impl true. And then there's a knit and the job of a knit. And so remember at this point, the module that is actually implemented the gen server is going to call our code, set us up with this state. And then it is going to loop retrieving a message from the process mailbox every time that it loops around. Okay. So in this case, we're going to set up our gen server with a configuration, if you will. And this configuration is going to be the max number that we can create, right? So rather than a stack, I'm going to say, let's have a, the max size of random number that we can create. And then all this is, is the handler within the gen server that the gen server will call each time a message happens. In this case, the type of message is a two-way message. 
you can tell that this is a reply tuple and that means that something's going to go back to the client and something is going to get fed back into the process. So in this case, this last argument, the state of our gen server is just our configuration or the max number that we can get. And we don't need to change that max. And then the thing that's going to go back to the client is this argument right here, this the second element of the tuple. And so I'm going to call rand.uniform. And then I'm going to say, give me a number from one to the max. And that's all that there is to it. I've created my first gen server. So again, all that this is doing is saying, start a process where the initial value is max. And every time that we call this gen server with the call, rather than have the gen server take care of it, well, let's process that call with generic code. So the handle call is just a way to, to manage the results of the callback. And in this case, we're creating a random number to send back to the client and then passing the configuration, which is just some max integer back into the server. So I have everything that I need to actually run a process that's going to work as a random number generator. And one of the things that I could do over time is, well, within this state, I could track the data that comes back over a period of time just to make sure that I'm getting a uniform value set or something like that. It doesn't really matter. It's This is a process. All it does is a little bit of work and that work is to generate a random number. Okay, so let's go back to the client and let's use this code. So I'm going to recompile and then I can say gen server So this is going to be start link, and this is going to take two arguments. And if you think about it, it has to take at least two arguments. One has to be the module that has the code itself. And in this case, the module is the one that we just built, the Randy module. And then the other argument is that configuration that we talked about earlier. Let's say that we want to create a random number. Let's say we want to simulate a six sided die. So let's say, that we're going to, that the max is six. Okay, so now I can tell that this process is alive by saying this is the process ID. I didn't grab it, did I? Well, let's go and grab it. Let's say, okay, PID is equal to, and then the result of IEX line three, which is V3. Okay, so now I have this PID and that's my random number server. So now I can say gen server and I can interact with it. And these are some of the things, ways that I can interact with it. Well, one of the ways that I can interact with it is to make a call and that's what I'm going to do. So as you can imagine, the call that I'm going to make is going to have the PID and then whatever message that I want to send to it. Well, remember the messages that I can send well, I've only implemented one, and that's this pop. Uh, we should call it something else. We should call this rand. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and call that rand. We're going to recompile this before we call this code. So let's copy that, and I'm going to recompile. Okay, so that's done, but this thing is still running, and I can do the call, and I'm going to pass the PID, and then I say, I say, give me a random number and it gives me a four. I say, give me another one and it gives me a six. These are the pieces that we want to talk about. Remember that an Elixir behavior, the one that we set up right here, it's a gen server behavior. All it is, is a plugin that has a contract. And the plugin is going to allow us to provide a module that provides an implementation. And in this case, the implementation that we are providing is what to do when there's a two-way message and what to do when the gen server starts up. And otherwise, we get out of the way and let the gen server loop over these results. And so this is the handling of the call, but then there's a library. And the library has things like 
O, start the gen server up like this, right? Where we provide our plugin, which is the Randy module, and our configuration, which says, let's create numbers from one to six. And then we can also use other APIs to interact with it. So in this case, I have a process and I can call the process with a gen server dot call. And so let's make a call. And we can also take a look at the state in our gen server and do some other things like that. And we're going to do those next. All right, so we have a PID and we can do a couple of things with the PID. One of the things that we could do is see if it's alive. And a PID is the data type that's related to a process. It's basically a handle that we could use to name an individual process. And, and so what are some of the things that we can do to it? Well, one of the things that we could do is check to see if it's alive. So let's see if that is alive. It is. And in fact, there are ways to debug a gen server. So there are some calls that we can drill through Elixir down to the Erlang foundations and get access to some features that allow us to do things like, oh, check the state. So I could say sys.get state. And we have this process ID. So I'm going to say, give me the state for that particular process. Well, the state is six, and that's what we expected it to be. So let's go back to our original definition. So remember, OTP is a library for processes, and we use the part of it that deals with the gen server. And it also has a common API, and you saw that common API, or part of it anyway, that there were functions that we could use to interact with processes, like start this thing up, like send a message. And there was also a contract between the gen server and our custom plugin called a behavior that defined the messages that we're allowed to use, like the init and like that handle call. And then we can use it to manage messages, which we did. We sent that message and got a response back. And we can also use it to manage life cycles. And we're going to do that in the video series to come. And as you look into OTP, you're going to find that this is one of the central elements that makes Elixir so exciting. It's going to give us a great way to manage concurrency. And more importantly, it's going to give us a great way to manage self-healing software by managing the life cycles with the supervision. And that's really an excellent thing. From Bruce and the dog on the floor, this is Groxio Learning.